that you are very skillful, very smart. And uh, yes, you didn't tell us you don't know anything about emotional intelligence, even though you do, but you don't want to preempt the resource person that has been given this role. However, uh, with the permission of my directors here present, I think uh, we want to call on the resource person. The resource person is somebody that is very new to me. In fact, she is newer to me than a new pin. So on account of that, I'm not able go, going to be able to say much about that. However, they say the, the Yoruba people will say, Enone, Kon, Latin, Go, Kon. They say, let the owner, let him come and take the floor so that all of us, by the time we finish, our lives will not remain the same again. Permit me to welcome this uh, beautiful young lady. Let me stop there. Thank you very much, you are welcome. I've been to several schools to train teachers, and one of the topics that we train often is emotional intelligence. We're going to go into shortly why it's important, most especially in a school environment like this. So my name is Atinuke Obikoya, but if you call me Tinu, I will just like it. All right, so once again, you're welcome, and we're not going to waste much time before we go into discussing emotional intelligence. And I appreciate Mala and Musa, am I right? Yes. For escaping. <laughs> For being emotionally intelligent. He applied emotional intelligence in escaping that um, you know, hurdle. But I appreciate you for talking about the multiple intelligences, the cognitive, the affective. Who remembers the last one? Psychomotor, yes. And so, as he rightly said, emotional intelligence is about the affective. This is about the affective, and it's basically saying that every human being is simply a bundle of emotions. Human beings are not machines. You can't program them to get performance. We, I was called upon to train some directors in the Air Force on emotional intelligence. And the first question I asked was, this is an environment of command and control. What am I going to tell them? But you know that even in that environment, they told me, they said, Tinuke, we face a lot of problems with our people. Because we command and control, we often forget that they are not machines. And they appreciated the topic at the end of the day. So we want to see what it's all about. And if I ask you, what do you think emotional intelligence is? What do you think emotional intelligence is? I'm not a lecturer. <laughs> I'm a management consultant. So when I come to class, I don't dump information on you. It has to be interactive. When I ask this question in a setting, somebody said emotional intelligence is the intelligence of emotions. Do you think the person was right? So absolutely, the person was close to the answer. The owner of the, intel the emotions is who would be what? Intelligent. Emotions cannot on their own be intelligent. We talk about nature, we talk about nurture, and the debate always goes on. Some people would say, I am short-tempered. That, that's the way I was born, that's who I am. And there is nothing anybody can do about it. But is that true? Is it true? That's nature. It may be your nature that you are not tolerant. It may be your nature that you are short-tempered. But if you have to be intelligent, you must learn how to manage that nature. And that's where nurture comes in. That's where learning comes in. And of course, it's the reason that we're doing what we're doing now. I have a quote up here that says, the great solution to all human problems is individual what? Can we see it? Individual inner transformation. No matter how much you speak, if people have made up their minds not to change, what happens? Nothing happens. Even the children that we interact with, once that will to change is not there, then there is no way you can break through. Okay? So what we are aiming for is our ability to change ourselves first before we attempt to help these people that we are working with. If 
a teacher does not have a hold on their emotions, they're going to pass on negative vibes even to the students that you deal with. Is that correct? There are no right or wrong answers. <laughs> I'm asking for your personal experience. What kind of pressures do you face in the school environment? Managing students, is it a pressure? It is. Okay. Managing students. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Time. Working on that time pressure. You have a lot to do, but there isn't enough time. All right. Thank you. Which other one? Yes, sir. Meeting up with deadline. Yes, thank you. It's connected to time also. Are those all? If those are all, then I think I'll come and take up employment in your school. <laughs> it means really you don't have pressures. You want to say something, ma? Behavioral issues. Behavioral issues. Behavioral issues. You want somebody to behave this way but they keep doing exactly what you don't want them to do. It's a pressure, and you must recognize that that's a pressure on you. And emotional intelligence will teach you the ability to manage that, not just to manage yourself, but also to impact on that situation. You are not just waiting for that child to finish and go. Let him just finish and graduate and go his way. You are saying, before this child goes, how can I help in shaping him? Okay? And that means that you would, yourself, you would have understood what exactly the problem is. So, by way of introduction, we say that emotional intelligence is a part of you that affects every aspect of your life. Why do we think this is so? It affects every aspect of your life. If people succeed, you find out that you can trace it to how they manage themselves. If somebody is not successful, you find out that you can trace it to how they cannot manage themselves if they are not disciplined. A colleague of mine told me once, he said, Tineke, you always get a lot of training opportunities. I said, yes. Yesterday I was in class with some directors all day and we were discussing emotional intelligence. I said, yes, I get a lot of opportunities. He said, that's good. I don't really get so many opportunities like that. You know, sometimes people don't treat you well. When they don't treat me well, I, I give it to them. <laughs> I say, what do you give to them? So if somebody doesn't treat you well, you insult them or you end the relationship. What do you think the future will tell for that person? What it means is that you don't have a control on your, of yourself and you keep reacting to what everybody does. Then you are not stable. So sometimes people will not treat you right. Sometimes things will not go the way you want things to go. But how will you respond or react as the case may be? Understanding the root causes of your emotions and how to use them can help you to effectively identify who you are. If you don't even know who you are, how then can you help other people? And then once you know who you are, you cannot manage your interactions with other people. In 1995, Daniel Goleman wrote this book on emotional intelligence. And he's saying that why IQ is not the end of the game. In the school environment, of course, we emphasize IQ. But in the real world, IQ is entry level. If you have a degree, the degree opens the door. Am I correct? When you get into that organization, what determines how well you do will not be just the IQ, but what? Every other intelligence that you have, which emotional intelligence is one of them. There is a write-up that says, educators need emotional intelligence because you work in an environment where we call it a caregiving environment. Am I correct? Educators, people who work in the hospitals, we teach medical consultants emotional intelligence also. Those environments, it goes beyond how much I'm paid to how much do I want to give. If you keep looking at the money, you will never do what you're supposed to do. So this is why you need emotional intelligence. 
and someone says teachers need to be trained in emotional intelligence to manage their own emotions for what? Helping. For helping students. This means emotional intelligence has become important for both teachers and the students. But then again, they say the role of emotional intelligence is very prodigious in educational field and in teaching. How do you get across to a child who doesn't want to learn? If you have a child in your class who doesn't want to learn, how do you get across to that person? Is it by giving him a very big textbook? What do you do? Can anybody tell me? If you meet a wall every time you try to connect to a child, what can you do? Yes, ma'am. Of course, identify what can attract the student. You identify what can attract the student. You want to entice the student to yourself. But do you know that your ability to identify means that you are emotionally intelligent? Because when you don't study people, you'll be applying wrong solutions. It's like when your diagnosis is wrong. If diagnosis is wrong, the treatment can never be right. There is a child who is stubborn. If you don't diagnose where the stubbornness is coming from, you can't understand that child. So for you to understand people, yourself, you need emotional intelligence. So of course, we've been talking about the concept of emotional intelligence. We're going to look at five domains of emotional intelligence, which after I'm going to ask you, I brought a book for somebody to win. Who's going to win it? Who's going to win it? Nobody? Okay. <laughs> All right. So you work for it when I ask your question. Incidentally, it's a book written by Daniel Goleman also, but it's called Focus this time. All right. So we talk about the benefits of emotional intelligence, then we we'll look at how we can develop emotional intelligence. Now let's define what emotional intelligence is. I hope we are writing. Are you writing? Teachers are not writing. <laughs> All right. So emotional intelligence is the ability to do what? To identify, first of all, use, understand, and what? Manage your emotions in positive and what? Constructive ways. Does it mean that emotions can become destructive? Can they become destructive? When? When do they become destructive? When you're angry, when you're thinking with your emotions, what would you think with? <laughs> you think along with your emotions, okay? Is it only the negative emotions that can destroy? Is it possible that positive emotions, if not handled well, can land somebody in trouble? A guy traveled to Kaduna by road. And before leaving, he had signed some contracts, so they told him, send your account number. And then as he was coming back, he was driving, he saw the first alert, 10 million naira. The first thing he did was to increase the volume of the music and increase the speed. He drove a little and saw another alert, another 10 million. He increased both the speed and the music again. He ended up under a trailer. But luckily, it was one who narrated it. What do you think happened to him? Did he have an emotion? Right? He had an emotion he could not control. So that's what we're talking about. Emotions, either positive or negative, when not managed, can become destructive. So it's important that we know that that's the first lesson that we are taking away. And now, you can use even the negative emotion in a constructive manner. If you're angry, can you use your anger positively? No? You can. Because when you're angry, we are charged with energy. So rather than looking for who to, who to punch, what do you do? You take a walk. But then that energy, make sure it does not go to waste. Use it for something positive. I'll share it with you. I used to be very broke. Really broke. You know that is broke, that is broke, broke. Then that is broke, broke, broke. 
That was then, right? I don't look broke now. <laughs> Alright, so mine was the third one. Broke, broke, broke. And then when you find yourself at a stage in life where you know that at my age, I should not be here. The next thing that happens is that you get angry. You're angry at yourself. You're angry with people unnecessarily. But you know that I use that anger to work on myself. I use that anger positively and made a promise to myself that I will never be at any point without resources. Are we together? If you're working in a place and somebody talks to you in a manner that you don't like, rather than fight them, ask yourself, why am I here? Am I saying something? Say, why am I here? Why can I not be in a place where I am valued? When you go back and check, you see that you missed out on some things. Go back and address those things so that you can give yourself what you believe you deserve. Is it making sense? So you don't come to the workplace and begin to bear what? Grudges. We were training for a school in Wuye, a very big school. When I say big, a school can have big structures. But you may not even know the state of the finances of that school. Because the owner of the school can go to take a loan to put that structure in place, hoping that when we start to make money, we're going to repay, and you're doing that. So that was the story of that school. But the people who came to work there believed that for this school to have this big structure, there must be what? Money. They call it money. <laughs> and then they came to that school expecting so much and demanding so much. So the owner got frustrated. I said, please, let's have a retreat. I want to know what's in these people's minds. That's emotional intelligence. So we started to interact with them. We said, eh, they're riding big cars. They have big structures. They cannot pay us. I said, what you're asking for, this school cannot give it to you. If you would, please, go out there and look for what you believe you deserve. So that you don't put unnecessary pressure. Because this place cannot give you that. I used to work for an Indian man. <laughs> what do you know about Indians? They are nice people, right? They don't joke with money. <laughs> so this man will promise us. We say, don't worry, you people, I'm going to increase your salary. And then you wait and wait and wait, and salary is not increased. So my colleagues would be so angry. And the next thing they do is to take that anger out on the customers. Is that right? Now, when you do that, what are you doing? You are, you are not supporting the organization only. You are doing a disservice to yourself first. Because everybody who comes into that place will come to know you as that cranky woman. Or that man who does not greet or who does not smile. And who are you angry with, really? You are angry with yourself. So my colleagues asked me one day, they said, why is it that you, you will not even complain? You are still smiling with the man. I said, that man is not my problem. Hello? That man is what? That man is not my... It's not the genesis of my problem. Emotional intelligence will teach you to identify before you begin to transfer what? Aggression. And do you know that they say that the way somebody behaves in the jungle will determine how long they stay there? Have you heard it before? <laughs> So if you, if you have a job and you feel, oh, I'm not being given what I believe I deserve, and you're not doing poorly on that job, have you complicated your matter? Absolutely. Absolutely. So what worked for me was that I had customers who came in and would say, you're a very nice lady, you're a very nice lady. Can we help you in any way? And I got help. And I could move to another level in my life. So what are we learning from this slide? You must identify your emotions. You must go to the root cause of that emotion. We are first of all dealing with us before we move to how we can help the children. We also say that emotional intelligence is a different way to be smart. Smartness does not end with IQ. A boy went for an interview at NMPC. Very intelligent. So when he got there, he impressed all of the interviewers, the panel. They said, wow, these are the kind of minds we are looking for. Very bright, very intelligent. 
And then after they were done with him, they said, do you have any question for us? He said, well, yes, I have a question. I used to look at NMPC as a very reputable organization. I thought that coming here, I would find smart-looking, dressed people. Are we together? He said, I thought I would see people who are dressed smartly and who are sharp. He said, but coming here, I can see, please, would you hire that guy? I'm asking you. Of course, he didn't get that job. In short, the interviewers concluded. They said his village people followed him there. <laughs> when you see a situation like that, you're seeing somebody who's book smart, but who's not emotionally intelligent. Emotional intelligence will tell you, should I say this thing? If I say it, how will these people feel? So we're saying here is the capacity to be aware of. You must first of all be aware of. The next thing to do is what? Control. We're not saying suppress your emotions, but we're saying control your emotions before you go ahead to express. You must never express uncontrolled emotions. Are we together? Either at home, either at work, anywhere that you find yourself. Be it positive or negative emotions. Somebody also bought a car for a 16-year-old boy. He said the boy cleared his papers and was very impressed. So he gave him a car. He was happy. That boy had a terrible accident that almost claimed his life. So what do you say to that? A positive emotion that went on checked. Identify, control, and what? Express your emotions. When you do this, you can handle interpersonal relationships judiciously and empathetically. Empathy is where other people are involved. Maybe there is a child that's difficult. We're going to talk about how to manage difficult children. The first thing to do is to empathize. Are we together? No matter how difficult that child is, the first thing to do is to ask yourself, I'm, I'm curious. I'm interested. Why is this child behaving this way? I learned something some years back. They said that if you grew up in an environment where that person grew up, if you were raised by the people who raised them, given birth to by the same people, even you will behave the same way. Or worse, because they're a product of what? Everything. So if you had all of those conditions, even you would be like that. That means you are only privileged to not be like that. And that's empathy at its best. When you can empathize, you can then go ahead to solve problems. We've talked about it. Emotional intelligence versus IQ. Which is most, more important? Emotional intelligence. We're not saying IQ is not important. There are some people who don't have degrees, but they have more money than us. Right? What do they have? They have people skills. People skills. Somebody does not have a PhD. I don't think Dangote has a PhD. He doesn't. Not yet. Maybe, even if he has now, maybe honorary. But does he have PhD holders working for him? So it's your ability to know how to manage people, put people together to get results. You don't need all of the IQ. You don't need all of the IQ. Do you have good people skills? Anybody with good people skills, you are marketable anywhere, any day. And do you know why? Because we are moving so fast into artificial intelligence. And the robots are taking over the jobs of people. So the only thing that will be left for you to do will be those things that the machines cannot if they can get a machine to do things, why do they need a human being there? Have we gone to supermarkets abroad where you're looking around and you can't find a single person? Because it's self-service. Some supermarket, now when you get there, nobody, you see the item you want to buy, you see where you check out, you see, but the cameras are there. So you really must start to think, how do I sustain relevance in a world that is moving so fast? Okay, And one of those things to do is to build other intelligences, apart from what? 
IQ. Research has found out that emotional intelligence is far more important to success in life and the workplace than intelligent work quotient. Many people have high IQ, but they have poor relational skills. And what does this do? It results into their inability to succeed at work or in other life relationships. Emotional intelligence forms that foundation for you because everywhere you go, you meet people. Is there anybody here who lives alone? Hmm? Is there anybody here who lives alone? Yes, you're a bachelor. Even if you're a bachelor, you'll be living in a compound that has people. Even if you live in a compound and you're the only person in that compound, there will be people on the street. There will be some times that community will bring you together. When you come to the place of work, you have to interact with people from different backgrounds. So no man can ever be what? An island. Yes, I talked about the domains of emotional intelligence. Because any time you are asked, you should always be able to remember this five. The first one is what? Self-awareness. Self-awareness. This is the root of all effectiveness. If you want to become more effective in your life, if you want to make more money, if you want to do more with yourself, be, first of all, what? Self-aware. Self-awareness means that you know yourself. You know your strength. You know your weaknesses. You know your self-worth. How is self-worth different from net worth? Net worth is talking about the things I have. My cars, my houses, right? What's self-worth addressing? It's addressing me. It's saying that what can I bring to the table minus all of those externalities. So you have to begin to think of yourself in that way. What are the things that make me valuable? If you can't find, you need to start looking for what makes me valuable. Maybe it's your ability to bring people together. There are some people here. If they don't come to work, you miss them. Am I correct? If there is a challenge, you say, ah, I wish your girl was around. It's the one that we really know how to. And that's the value they bring. Self-regulation. I told the directors who were training yesterday, I said, anybody without self-control is powerless. Anybody without self-control is what? Is powerless. You are so, if you, that person will be so powerless. What it means is that every situation... It's like when you use remote control. If somebody gets you angry, the next thing is what? If somebody insults you, the next thing is you go angry. If you move forward a little, you see another person who frowns. You see that person is frowning at me. You're reacting to everything that you see. Right? So self-regulation means you're controlling your impulses. You're controlling your impulses. Sometimes you have conflict with people. Somebody says, you're stupid. What's the next thing you do? You're stupid too. Alright? But you know that between the time that person insulted you and when you responded, you had a moment of choice. Do we know that? You had a moment of choice. A choice to do what? To respond or... Or react. Thank you, ma'am. Reaction is when you don't think about it and you just do it. Response is when you think about it. What will I gain if I call this person stupid? Meanwhile, why am I even getting angry that he's calling me stupid? Does he know me? Have you been driving on the road and somebody will tell you? Do you see it? I'm sure nobody here does it. <laughs> am I sure? Yeah. So when somebody does that, and you don't know them from anywhere, of what use is it that you respond to them? Somebody said, when I do it, it makes me just feel good. I said, go and look for other things to make you feel good, please. Not that. So we must be able to control our impulse. You must be able to reflect. Emotionally intelligent people reflect. If something went down at work, and you didn't like how everything became a mess, when you get home, sit down and begin to ask yourself, what did I contribute to what happened today? If I had said something else, would it have 
gone on better. That's reflection. And to tell you the truth, anybody who cannot reflect cannot get better. If you can't reflect, you really cannot get better. Self-motivation. Do we need it? Do we need self-motivation? Why do we need it? It, it helps you to move on. It helps you to face challenges. It helps you not to stop when you see obstacles. Am I correct? It's good that people motivate you from outside, but please don't wait for them. Hello? How many of us will not wait? They may wake up late, and your day has already started. They may even forget. Everybody has their own problems. So don't wait for that motivation outside. Do what? The most powerful form of motivation is the one you can give yourself. That's the most powerful. It makes you powerful. It makes you look at challenges and say, I, I, I have this. I can go through this. I can be better through this. All right? So what it means when you're self-motivated is that you have a sense of purpose. If you wanted to pick up a job in this school and you saw the buildings from outside and you say, wow, that's good. Sincerely, I really don't know much about this school, you know. But then you get here, you see that, ah, uh -uh, I thought there would be a lot of money. <laughs> and it's not what you thought it would be. What do you do? Do you keep your performance in your pocket? What do you do? You still give that performance. You say, so long as I took this job up, I will do what? I will do my best. Because that's what defines you as somebody with a sense of what? Purpose. Self-direction. Now let's move to empathy. We've talked about it. Compassionate reasoning. You can put your feet in another person's shoes and remember that if you had all of their conditions, even you would be like them. Social skills. Interpersonal skills. These days we are so focused on the phone that many people don't even know how to engage. Many people don't even, they don't even know how to have that confidence to make a cold call. Let's say you start a business, you don't have customers. How many cold calls can you make? Can you go to a place where you don't know anybody, introduce yourself and get transactions done? Interpersonal skills. When I was roaming the streets of Abuja, those days when I was broke, I came here by mistake. I didn't plan to come to Abuja. And I had left my job just two years before then. So I was 30 plus, but I didn't have a source of income. So I would go from one company to another to look for opportunities. I learned my emotional intelligence on the streets. That's what we call street smartness, right? They say you are street smart. Anybody who is street smart can find their way, no matter how tough things are. So when I go to an office, I'll say, good morning. Please, can I see the director? The person may not even look up at me. They say, no, do you have an appointment with you? Is he expecting me? No. Then I'll go out. When I encountered that for a number of times, I said, Tinike, wait, how many places will you go before your common sense wakes up? You have to connect with these people that you see. Otherwise, you may never be able to see those people that you believe you want to see inside. So I started to change my ways. When I go into a place, I will smile. I didn't like smiling because I was broke. <laughs> I would go in and say, Oga, good morning, sir. I won't tell you, Oga, good morning. I will put the sir. The moment I say, Oga, good morning, sir, the person looks up. You say, yes, good morning. What do you want? I say, sir, please, I'm trying to find out. Is it possible that I see the director, A, B, C, D, E, F? Do you know that I will get help from that place? What did I improve on? Interpersonal relationships. The things I'm looking for will not drop in my laps. Somebody said everything you want or desire is already with somebody else. How are you going to negotiate your way to get it? Have you learned anything today? Have you? I also set questions for you. <laughs> All right. So these are the five domains of emotional intelligence. But I want you to note something. You see the one, two, three belong to your intrapersonal realm. When we say intra, we say within you. And 
the last two belong where? Interpersonal realm. Self awareness, right? And I get my self control, right? And I get my self motivation, right? It will be easier for me to do what? To empathize with people and build good relationships. I was speaking in a school. And um, the owner of the school had told me, he said, these people, I don't understand their attitude. When they see the parents, they're not even excited. They don't know that these are the people who make it happen. That if these people don't bring their children, there won't be money. If there are no parents, I won't use my own money to pay them. Right? So when I went in there, I said, please, let me beg you. If you don't have money, please have people. If you don't have money, have what? Even when you have money, you still need people. But it's double tragedy for somebody who is broke to not have what? To not have people. Somebody jumped in the lagoon in Lagos one day. He was owing 80,000 naira. He was owing how much? 80,000 naira. And he jumped into the lagoon. Do you think he had help? I now ask myself, divide 80 by 10. Does it mean that you don't have 10 people in your life that will contribute what? 80,000. Or even belong to a WhatsApp group of your local community where they will say, our brother needs help or drop 500. And that money will be what? Some people don't know the value of relationships. You may even have money today, but nobody knows what's next around the corner. We don't pray for it. So please, what I told them, I said, value people. All these parents that you see who are coming in, the best thing you can do is to have good relationship with them. It will help the school and it will also help you. So for you to be emotionally intelligent, we say you have interpersonal what? Effectiveness. And intrapersonal Effective. It should be this way because intra comes first. You can't be effective even on your job without emotional intelligence. You can't be effective. If you don't have issues with the director you're going to have with the teachers, if you don't have with the teachers you're going to have with the students, if you don't have with the students you have with the parents of the students. Do you know people like that? But they are not in this school. <laughs> Absolutely. So one of the things that you gain, as I shared before, effective word, communication. What the, what's the most important thing in communication? Listening. Listening. Being observant. When you observe someone, you will know how to speak to them. Maybe you have a boss who does not like people who are... Somebody should give me the, the word to use. Pushy. Pushy. People who are pushy or people who are forward. And then you keep saying, that woman doesn't like me, I just don't know why. You haven't studied that person. You may know a lot. As one boy told me, he said, my director does not know anything. All these old people. I said, really? <laughs> he said, and you know the worst thing? You be giving him advice and giving him advice. He does not even take them. I said, how do you give him? Hope he's not like this. Because if that's what you do, it will not take those advice from you. Will you take advice from somebody who says, okay, this thing you are doing is not correct, do it this way. Will you take it? The name you say, please get this boy out of my office. <laughs> Alright? So emotional intelligence teaches you to observe, listen before you know what to say. Or even when to say it. You want to go and complain to somebody. You open their office. You see that there is a situation. What do you do? You go back. Do you know another name for emotional intelligence? They call it elusive common sense. Elusive. It's not just common sense. Oh. Why is it elusive? It escapes us. You go into a situation. You want to complain of something. That person already has another situation. They're going to say, Madam, Madam, it's because of it I'm tolerating this guy. Well, come and warn him. What will Madam do? She will warn you. <laughs> All right. 
In conversations, emotionally intelligent people listen for clarity. When somebody is talking to you, you are not listening to reply. What are you listening to do? To understand what they are saying. Forget about your reply. Listen to understand. Make sure you are clear before you say anything. They also pay attention to the word non-verbal details. There is something they call body language. You look at someone, you say, no, this is not the right time. Or you look at someone, you say, something is wrong with this person. She's not saying it. But let me ask. The other thing is what? Self-management. Have we discussed self-management today? Have we? Absolutely. Managing your intrapersonal realm is self-management. They say a smooth sea never made what? A skilled sailor. Some people prefer that life goes like this. Let them just put one leg on one ladder and go and go and go. And then they enter money. Big money. <laughs> How many of us like that? Everybody loves to have money easily. But does it work that way? It doesn't. Any money that you make without effort, you can't make that money back if you lose it. A friend of mine said he turned away jobs because he was busy. The kind of work I do. I said, how can you do that? Okay, I'm going to send my account details now so that you, you compensate me for what you have done. I was just joking. I said, okay, you know what you're going to do? Connect me to those places. Let them give me those jobs. So when he kept pushing and pushing, he said to me, okay, will it not be better if I give you the cash? I said, no, don't give me the cash. Give me the work. If you give me the cash, I won't go through anything, right? But if you give me the job, that one job will produce what? It will produce another one. And I would have grown while doing that job. I don't ask people for free money. I don't even want it. I want to do something. Give me an opportunity that lets me earn money. Because that's the only way that you grow and develop skills. So what I'm trying to say here is, Life will not always go as you planned. How many of us have realized that? Some of us are working in this school and you are saying, I never thought I would be here. Somebody turned 50 and wasn't living in his house. He said, I'm so, I'm so frustrated. I thought by 50 I should be living in my own house. I said, that's life for you. The first thing to do is to thank God that you're alive. And then what happens? Life continues. Life goes on, and it's because of the way you are looking at it. Some people have a lot of money. Warren Buffett is one of the richest men in the world. The house he was living in, how many decades ago? Before he made money, that's the house he still lives in. So it's really your perspective. So emotionally intelligent people are self-motivated, and their attitude motivates other people. They set goals and they are resilient in the face of what? Challenges. We need today to be resilient. We need more to teach the children how to be what? Resilient. A child takes jam, fails, and then takes sniper. What do you think is responsible for that? Wrong mindset. The mindset that I should not fail. The mindset that if I fail an exam, then I am... A failure, which is not true. So you need to be able to guide their thinking and let them understand that, see, my friend, life is not like that. You must be prepared for anything that's coming around the corner. Self-management, of course. They say emotional intelligent people have an awareness of their moods and the moods of the people around them. And they guide their attitude accordingly. They know what they need to do in order to have a good day and an optimistic outlook. This could include having a great breakfast. If you feel you are tired of life or anything, just order for food. Eat first. Will things get better? Because sometimes when you are hungry, it will look as if this life does not even make sense. Eat. Go and look for good food first. Eat. That could change your mood. Sleep. Thank you, madam. And then, some of them engage in prayers, meditation, 
Because they know that what they are going through is tougher than them. And it's not out of place that you go to their desk and you see quotes that they put around their desk. This quote says what? Life is short. Make it what? Make it sweet. So when you encounter a challenge and you go back to your desk, you see life is short, make it sweet. Will you change your mind? The other thing is the ability to handle conflict. Now we're going into what you need to do to help the children. During instances of conflict, you see that tempers, tempers right. And people would say and unsay in those situations. Okay? If you're emotionally intelligent, you stay calm through stressful situations. It does not mean you're not angry, but it means you are powerful enough to control yourself. And I say that when there is conflict, the weakest person is the one that punches. Hello? The fact that you threw the punch makes you the weakest person. The most powerful person is the one who stopped himself from throwing that punch. It's a strategy. That's the saying of a prophet. So we must learn to stay calm during stressful situations. You can make things worse by what you say. Is that possible? They say the words are like what? Egg. Once it drops, you can't pack them. You say, madam, even you, even you, you are stupid. I've been keeping quiet all this while I've been but you have pushed me to the wall. Then later I now go back and say, hey, you know, I'm sorry. It's not that I was angry. Will madam ever forget that you called us stupid? All right. They don't make impulsive decisions that can lead to even bigger problems. Very important. And in the times of conflict, your focus should be a resolution. Your focus should be what? One of the questions you ask yourself, what do I want from this situation? Do I just want this person to feel bad? If that's your goal, then say things that will make them feel bad. But if your goal is a resolution, you must go back and emotionally, intelligently ap approach that situation. Are you getting bored? Are you getting bored? All right. We'll soon finish, I believe. How do educators benefit from emotional intelligence? Improved what? Assertiveness. Now, in communication, we talk about passive, we talk about assertive, we talk about aggressive, and we talk about passive, aggressive. When you're passive, what it means is that you cannot speak your mind. And that in itself is not good. That, what it means is that you are suppressing your emotions, and that's what we're saying you should not do. You don't suppress your emotions, you look for an intelligent way to pass them across. So you don't want to be passive. Some people are aggressive. They believe that's the only way they can get results. There is one man in one agency, ministry. They used to call him Spartanite. So what is believed was that if you are not aggressive, people will cheat you. And then you will approach everything with aggression. Where is my own? Beat on the table. If you are not careful, I will scatter everything now. So when they do that consistently, they start, they start they say, scatter it. You say, yes. If you don't scatter it, <laughs> they will not give you. He was proud. You know, some people are proud to be crazy. When you do something, they say, even me, I'm not well, though. <laughs> And they take pride. They say, because you see me wearing suits, I'm not well. <laughs> so this man will say, yes, let's scatter it. So one time there was a foreign, a, a study store, study tour outside the country. And they were making a list of the people that would go. Then they put his name. Then somebody said, eh, you want to scatter it to follow us? <laughs> they said, no, if he scatters in Nigeria, we can contain him. If he goes to London to go and scatter, all of us were there. Do you know he didn't go? They found a way to justify why he should not go. In the workplace, we talk about knowledge, skills, and attitude. Right? Somebody can have the knowledge and have the skills, but they don't have the attitude. 
So the person managing you or supervising you can say, knowledge, yes, skills, yes, but the attitude, no. Improved assertiveness. So rather than be aggressive, you want to be what? Assertive. You stand in the middle. I'm not passive. I'm not aggressive. This is where I am. I can speak my mind without insulting people. I can pass my, even in your personal relationship with your spouse. There are sometimes your spouse will do things that just drive you crazy. And there are things you want to say. But emotional intelligence will tell you that if I say this thing, this man will never forget. A man let chase his wife away. And when we are trying to reconcile, he said, that woman, I don't even want to see her again. He said, when I offend her, she doesn't just insult me. She crosses over my head to start insulting my parents. And for him, he could, but let me ask you, was it his parents that offended the lady? So really, when we are charged with emotions, reasoning begins to suffer. Did you get that? There are two sides of the brain when we are looking at right and left. The right side of the brain is what handles emotions. The left side is for what? Reasoning, logic. The moment you allow the right brain to dominate you, what's happening to the left? It's suppressed. It's suppressed. So if you want to be emotionally intelligent, if you see that you are charged, you must make yourself switch to the left side. How do you do it? Sometimes they say count one to ten. They are not saying count so that time can pass. They are saying count so that you can engage. In short, if you want to do it better, count from ten to one. That's more difficult. And that will use the left side more. A lady lost her life in, I think maybe two years ago, Maraba Yaya. She was driving and an Okada man had bashed her car. So the guy came down and was begging. She said no. She was so charged with emotions. Meanwhile, there was a very dangerous part of the road. She said, my husband is a military man. He will come and meet us here. Everybody begged her to no avail. Before you knew it, a truck had failed brakes. Some of us know that story. A truck had failed brakes, and even the husband had sent an officer from the office to go there to plead with her. That officer was there. He was part of the people who were killed. She died, the officer died, and some other people. Now, that's how powerful emotions can get. They make reasoning sleep. All right, so if you have, if you have emotional intelligence, as I said, you'll be assertive. Even when you're dealing with children, you have to be assertive. If you're passive, you'll be letting them have their way all of the time. If you're aggressive, you may not be addressing the problem. But you want to stay in the middle. You want to be assertive. The point is not to insult them. The point is to say the things that will make them reason or think otherwise. It's hard work. It is easier to be passive. Do you agree? You say, please, let this boy just be doing it. Do let him finish and leave the school. Or you want to be aggressive. Then you pounce on him. But when you stay in the middle, it's hard work, but it's the one that will give you the results you're looking for. If you're emotionally intelligent, you have better workplace relationships. It is not because everybody will change. Who will change? You will change the way you see everybody. If you're expecting that everybody will be perfect, you are in fantasy land. Am I correct? You say, can you imagine what I'm at? It just came in. People will always do anything because it's not within your control. You'll be able to handle conflict. We've talked about it. You'll be able to manage your stress better. How many of us feel stressed? Nobody is stressed here. Are you living in Nigeria? <laughs> you don't have stress. You're well paid. I can see I've taken it away. <laughs> I'm happy to hear that. So emotional intelligence helps you to manage what? Your stress levels. One man retired from NMPC. He worked and retired at the apex of his 
career. And then he, he liked cars a lot. So after retirement, he bought a machine. You know there are some cars that are machines. He bought a machine. And then he was driving in Lagos one day. Then somebody hit that car. He was a very short-tempered man. He came down from the car, looked at the damage, was shouting and shouting. Nobody touched him. He slumped and died. He just retired. So now when you ask yourself, you see somebody had an opportunity to work in such a good place. He would have money to enjoy retirement. But because of what? An inanimate object. Because no matter how fine a car is, a car is a car is a car is a car. It will not develop into a person, will it? It can't grow, can it? Nothing. But that's health. If you don't manage your emotions, it can trigger what? Health challenges. Even if it's not instant, like that man's own. The things that you bottle up over time, daily, will be affecting your health. And then, of course, career focus. There is no organization in this world that is perfect. Do you know that? None. Some people will say, ah, I'm looking for a job with development organizations. They earn a lot of money. <laughs> Somebody said, the, the politics in my office is too much. When I get a job with development organization, I say, you've not started. Do you know the kind of politics that go on there? So, if you are not focused, you'll be moving from place to place to place, looking for that perfect environment. Because our this thing is not, um, it's not dark. Yes, we are not able to. This is a video, but I'm sure many of us have seen it. It's a teacher and a child, and that child was coming late. And he came late day one, the teacher came then. He came late day two, the teacher came him. He came late day three, the teacher came him without asking any question. But on day four, while the teacher was cycling in the morning, he saw that, or jogging rather, he saw that boy cycling and selling newspapers. So apparently that's what he was doing, maybe to send himself to school or to support his friend, whatever the story was. So when he saw the boy, he followed him and saw that he really went to houses before going to prepare for school. And then you now find out that on that day four, this, that this was the man jogging. You can see the boy. By the time they got back to school on day four, Mom, never give up, right? It really usually isn't smooth. Absolutely. You must go through the difficulties for you to be a better person. Yes? From this North, North East constituent. <laughs> Sir? Growth, I've been eyeing your books. I see you're a reader. <laughs> Growth mindset. There are two types of mindset. You have the growth and the fixed mindset. When somebody has a growth mindset, they see effort as rewarding. You don't have the result yet, but you believe that putting the effort is something. People with fixed mindset don't want to put the effort. They look for the shortcut because they don't know that that process is what is most important. Any other lesson? Change is constant. Are you asking me a question? <laughs> because I was following you, Kelly. I thought you were teaching me something. <laughs> okay, you have objectives that are constant. And change is constant. The only wise thing to do is to make sure you are flexible in your approach. Right? Your goals can remain the same, but your approach must be flexible. Even your goals can change. Even your goals can 
change, the change in the world is so rapid. Maybe you wanted to take a course, and then you look around you, you see that there is no relevance anymore for that course. Why won't you change it? You must respond. They say that if the rate of change outside an organization is faster than the rate of change within that organization, there is going to be trouble. And the same goes for people. When the rate of change is faster than how smart you are getting, you will not be able to meet up. Okay? So flexibility is key. No pain, no gain. Thank you. We are done. No pain, no gain. So who can tell me the five domains of emotional intelligence? By yourself, you stand up and say everything. Now that's difficult because I'm seeing three hands up. Which hand came up first? <laughs> so nobody will win the book. I should tell him. His own hand came up first. Do we agree? Okay. Let me give him. They said his hand came up first. This man says we not. <laughs> oh yeah, tell us now. Yes. You are not standing. That's why I won't give you the book. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You tried, but you didn't give us in the order. <laughs> let me give you, let me give you. <laughs> All right. Please make sure you read that book. Will you read it? You will not. All right. On this note, I want to say thank you for your time and attention. You've been a wonderful audience. Before then, uh, there are some books here. They are to support this and other relevant learnings in this same domain so that we get better. I think they also came from Auntie Tinoke. Uh -huh. Auntie Tinoke. The first one here is Attitude is Everything. I also have the power of self-discipline. They are all up for sales. Please see them after this time. Out. Um, we have learned about emotional intelligence. I, add, I want to add this. I don't know whether it will be relevant. I'm sorry, Director. I saw something. There was a football match. I think it was Portugal and another country. Uh, Ronaldo scored a goal. The referee didn't see it clearly. And he overruled it. Ronaldo became very emotional. And removed the captain band. And brushed it on the floor. And walked out of the field. From the spectators, somebody just jumped over, picked the cafe uh, band, and before you know it, the following day, it was on the internet, it's up for sales. He said he wanted to use the proceeds to help a small girl that was in need of heart, uh, heart surgery, and it was bought at the rate of $75,000, and it was used to meet the medical need of that innocent child and the child was treated and she had her health back emotional intelligence was Ronaldo very emotionally intelligent <laughs> the guy that jumped over was he more emotionally intelligent there's no time to answer that today director will answer that <laughs> um, I would like to uh, thank Ms. Tunike I know how and what happened that brought her here, the notice was very, very short, and uh, she responded. She also accepted to come and do this uh, almost for free, because the person that invited her warned her that this is not the usual organizations you go to. This is a school, and the school doesn't have enough money. And she said, don't worry, ma. I will still come and do it. We thank you so much for that response, and we thank you for coming. Um, was it yesterday that we had a staff meeting? I spoke to you at the staff meeting, and um, even though I'm not an expert on emotional intelligence, I could see it was there yesterday reverberating at that meeting. 
that was exactly what we were talking about when we spoke to uh, to the staff. So we thank you so much. Um, before I end, and as I'm ending, it's about time for prayers. I would like to invite the winner of the book to come and do a vote of thanks and also confess. Uh, thank because you, our teacher. Uh, uh, First of all, I'm very grateful for the gift of the book. <laughs> My colleagues are saying that I should give it to them. Because I don't know why they are saying I should give it to them. But I will read it. Even if I've read it before, I'll read it again. Because you've given some perspective here that are very relatable. Especially to our situation in Nigeria here. I know emotional intelligence from an academic context. But uh, how to apply it here and how to apply it at homes and in, our, in the work situations, you made that very, very clear, especially with the stories you told. So we are very, very grateful for this session. And thank you so much for doing it for almost free. <laughs> yes. I, I, I also understand that uh, my director has some gifts. To uh, Tinike is a professional colleague. We have been working together in my office for quite a long time, and I've been enjoying her training. She presents papers sometimes. Yes, I know when we want to present, we do some part, and they do the professional aspect. So I know that she's having a lot to deliver, and that is why when I saw the issue of our children, how we are treating them, how they are treating us, I felt that this lecture will go a long way in at least balancing the situation. And I think she did justice to her paper. And uh, as uh, Mr. Duba said, she did it for almost free. Because I told her that AC is not having a budget for this training. But this should be part of our corporate social responsibility. And sincerely, she gave us a prize that I know is not what she should be paid. So she has given to the society what they have been investing in her. And I hope that you utilize this tra training. Let us see it being implemented in our children so that we'll be happy and she should be happy to come and continue to impact her knowledge on all, us, on, on all of us. Tineke, we thank you so much. Thank you for being part of the esteemed family. For now, you are part of us and I hope you'll be coming to share a lot of knowledge with them. Thank you and may God bless you.